We crossed the backyard in the dark shade of Mrs Duffy's cherry tree. In two months when they run the Kentucky Derby, the cherry blossoms will be in bloom. She wanted to have it cut down, she said, because she didn't want nobody to hide behind it in the dark. Lounging hand in pocket in the daytime, as everybody laughed at her, I nodded and agreed she was silly to want that tree cut down. The doctor flattened into its shadow like a passing thing. I brought up the rear. Shh. We crossed on tiptoe to the fence and leapt cleanly into the yard of my old Phoebe Avenue house. Another family lives there, man and eight kids. I look swiftly as I pass under green porch at hauntids in the brown gloom of rakes, old balls, old papers. Up I look at my ancient bedroom window where once within, in light, I had begun my grey and hoary turf, 1934, Westropy the first jockey. The rattling doom glooms of other deaths we've died. Triumphant laughter snickered from the immense nasalities of Dr. Sachs as he led striding low through the grass and weeds of the yard, and we vaulted Marcons, tiptoed in gardens, came to the gloomy brown side of the Plouffe house and looked in at Jean Plouffe's window. I saw the shadow of Sachs far ahead. I hurried to follow. He was looking for the wrong room, it turned out. He hurried swiftly to rectify mistakes. Ah, I heard him say, as I fumbled and turned around in circles and he bumped into me coming around the other way and the force of his bump carried us in one shroud to the window. There we were, chins on the windowsill, looking in under a foot of no shade at Jean Plouffe reading Shadow magazine in bed. Poor Jean Plouffe, looking at the dark window to make a speech to an enemy cowboy but realises void. Nobody there. Sax and I were well concealed by his shroudy cape. It hung in great black velvet folds in the cubular shadows of the high wall yard. Mr. Plouffe's house had brown shingle planks and strange tar alleys he made himself, you'd think. He was asleep in his own part of the house that night. It was probably the one or two nights after the week Jean slept there. A lot of Lau families had several houses, several bedrooms, and wandered sullenly from one to another under great swishing trees of eternity's summer. Jean had the quilt up to his chin, only his wrist stuck out to hold the star western in his hand. On the cover you can see reddish brown riders shooting blue grey Colt 45s in a milky snow background sky with the words Street and Smith that always took your mind away from the red brown buttes of Stark West and made you realise a red brick building, somehow sooty, with big signs Street and Smith on it in white, dirty white near Street and Smith Street in the downtown section of Pittsburgh, New York. Sax chuckled, poked me in the ribs. Jean was engrossedly eyeing a beautiful sentence about Pete Vaccaro Kid riding up a dry arroyo in the mesquite desolations of a flat table near Needle, the road to Needle angling off like a wriggly snake through the brush humps of the desert below. Suddenly, Krakow, a bullet pinged in the rock and Pete levelled with the dust in a flap of brush-beaten chaps and spur jingles, lay still as a lizard in the sun. How eagerly the youth thus pursue his legends with a hungry eye, whispered Dr. Sachs, much amused. Would now the Korans of the grown-up gulptitude make keen misery of that hitch? A hitch will disgust your mind in time. A hitch is called time in jail. You'll come to rages you never dreamed. Me? Why? You'll come to when you lean your face over the nose will fall with it. That is known as death. You'll come to angular rages and lonely rummages among beast of day in hot glary circumstance made grip by the hour of the clock. That is known as civilization. You'll roll your feet together in the tense befuddles of ten thousand evenings in company in the parlour, in the pad. That is known as uh, socialising. You'll grow numb all over from inner paralytic thoughts and bad chairs. That is known as solitude. You'll inch along the ground on the day of your death and be pursued by the editorial cartoon Russian bear with a knife. 
and in his bare hug he will poignard you in the ready blood back to gleam in the pale Siberian sun. That is known as nightmares. You'll look at a wall of blank flesh and fritter to explain yourself. That is known as love. The flesh of your head will recede from the bone, leaving the bulldog determination pointing through the peak jaw, tremulo jawbone point. In other words, you'll slobber over your morning egg cup. That is known as old age, for which they have benefits. By and by, you'll rise to the sun and propel your mean bones hard and sure to huge labours and great steaming dinners and spit your pits out, aching cock-gloved nights in cobweb moons, the mist of tired dust at evening, the corn, the silk, the moon, the rail. That is known as maturity. But you'll never be as happy as you are now in your quiltish, innocent, book-devouring boyhood immortal night. Jean went on reading. We looked fondly a while at the way his prognathic jaw stuck up. His hawk nose came down, almost suffocating his ecstatic mouth with its thin round of breath whistling through it. Jean Shaw got high on a good magazine story. Ain't nothing I like better, Podner, than to wrap my entrails around a good mess of heaping Vitlin Star Western or Pete Coyote Westerns or The Shadow when dark he came perambulating his long soul laugh in the vault of the bank shade, yes. At times, Jean, to imitate prose of pulp magazines, began to sound like W.C. Fields. This is what he had said to me the day he led me down to the brown gloom of his father's drear house cellar, and we found shadows and thrilling detectives and argosies lying around in cobweb bins. Edify ye mind, me by, says Jean, remembering lines from some Argosy sea story. On go the shadow sacks and I, to blacker things in the night beyond. We skirt the packing house, glide swiftly, without transparency, but vaguely and without sound along the fence across the street at the Bungo house. Go on under immense roars of the huge tree above, still buzzing with its insect selves over the flood excitement, and pause only for a moment to look and give homage to my house, the lights of which on Saturday night were now tragically dark. I knew there was something wrong. There is nothing worse than the great weeping face of houses, a family house in the midnight.